Here we are again, folks. Jason here to show you more features in InDesign. And this one is going to be the span and split feature. And the span and split feature is all about working with text over what looks like multiple columns. And why do I say looks like multiple columns? Well, there's two different ways we can tackle a layout. If I select my text container with my selection tool and I look at my toolbar, I can go and take my text container and split this into multiple columns. One, two, three columns right there. Now, when I do this, there's certain things that I then cannot do. If I was formatting this menu and I would like this plates and sides to go all across the top of my menu and then have all these menu items split out into three columns, I would have to do a lot of work. First of all, I would probably have to take my plates and sides here, cut it out, and place it in a container across the entire top of my page, select it, center it, get rid of all my extra paragraph returns, and then I would have to take all of this copy here, cut this out of my text container, put another text container down here, and set this text container to be three columns, so I flow all my copy in and set my text container to be three columns. Then I have to balance that out. And then I have to worry about making sure that this distance is the same between here. And I've got all these text containers. That's a lot of work. Plus, it's also a lot of idiosyncrasies that can come into play here with, OK, how do I get the right spacing? How do I make this look the same? And if I change copy, then I've got to move everything else down. And there's just a lot of things that don't work. So thankfully for multiple undos, I'm going to do Command Z multiple times and get me back into my layout here. Now what I want to show you with columns or splitting multiple columns. So there's two different ways we can look at span and split. I could leave my text container with a single column like this. And then using my span and split features, I could then go in here and I could split my copy up into multiple columns inside my one column text container. How does that work? Well, works like this. I'm going to select all of my copy in this single column text container. But what I'd like to do here is I would like to have this be broken out into three columns and not in a totally separate text container. Because this is a one column text container, and I know that because I select my column, there it is, one column text container. I'm gonna take all of my text, select it all the way down to the end, including that last paragraph symbol. Then with my paragraph formatting controls, I'm going to go into my span and split column. Now, because this is a single text container, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take my selected type, have to select the type with your type tool. I'm going to take the selected type, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to split this into two columns, three columns, four columns, whatever I want. I'm going to split it into three. Okay, there it is. Now, crazy enough, this is still one single text container. But what I've done is I selected all the copy, and with all the copy selected, select everything that you want to split. I've chosen to split that into multiple columns. Now, just to remind you, this is a single column text container. So the split feature makes lots of sense. I can take this and split all the selected copy into multiple columns while my container is still a single column. That way, I can then take my headline here that I have. I can use my centering feature and I can center this in the middle of my copy. Going down to the next section, I could then select all of my copy here. Make sure you select every bit of it, including that last paragraph return there. Make sure your hidden characters are turned on. If you've forgotten how to do that, go under Type, show your hidden characters. Make sure you select everything that you want to go ahead and either span or, in this case, split. Here, I'm going to split this into, say, two columns. Now, I do this. And select my headline here, center that right there. Now, this is a really interesting thing to do because you notice this is still one text container. 
And it's like, wow, this is, you know, amazing that you can go and make it look like a three column container and a two column container here. Absolutely. Now, this is very smartly done because if you notice, if I pull a guide from my ruler here, you'll notice that when it goes through and it splits my text into multiple columns, it lines up the columns at the top of each and every column. Beautiful. This is a wonderful thing. Here, the same thing. When I split it into two columns or any type of columns, it will always line that up. Now, what's crazy is that when I select the copy here, you'll see when I select the copy, it goes down and selects the first seeming column or this appearance of a column all the way over to the next column. So let's do it again here. I select this column and then I select this column and this column right there. And it also does a very nice job at balancing the columns out as best it can. So here it fills up the first column, the second column and balances it out. If I were to take away a substantial amount of this and simply just cut it out of here, you'll notice that when I go in and I get rid of all my extra returns, it does a beautiful job at balancing it out as best it can. Don't leave any extra returns in here or else that's going to mess up your entire balance because it sees this as an item, a paragraph or a character or something that is then being taken into account and therefore it's going to throw off all of your balance. Again, you don't need extra spaces or extra returns in there. They don't do any good, but in this case, it will definitely throw it off. So I'm going to undo all of this and I'm going to go back and I'm going to try a totally different way of doing the span and split column features. What I just showed you was splitting the columns. Now I'm going to take a completely different tactic here. I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to set my entire text container to be three physical columns. So you can see my copy flows in to the one column into the next column. And if I had more, it'd flow into the third column. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my span feature. And my span feature is this. I would like this headline to span all of my columns. So going into my paragraph formatting controls and my control bar, I'm going to choose the span and split. And I can choose how many columns I'd like it to span. I've got three columns, so I can choose span three columns or just span all the columns. And when it does this, it spans all the columns, but you're like, okay, why isn't anything happening? Well, this is still flush left, okay? If I center this here, it puts it right across all of my columns. Now, this is a single text container that's three columns, and I've centered this inside my columns, but it's spanning all three columns. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to select all of my copy here in the first column, and I'm going to set this to also span the columns. Okay. Now, if I span all the columns, what it's going to do is it's going to go in and it's going to span all the columns right here. Okay. So now it goes in and it's not paying attention to the columns here. And it's like, okay, this is interesting, but this is not working the way that I would have expected. Well, if I said span all the columns, here's a column, here's a column, and here's a column. So it is now spanning all the columns. If I say span two columns, it will just span those two columns and then this copy comes up over here, okay? It's kind of weird because you look at this and you're like, what's going on? Well, what's going on here is you have your content going all the way. This is the next content going in and then it comes through here and it goes up through here. Why? Because I selected all my copy here and I told it to go in and span all my columns or in this case, two columns. If I span all three columns here, it's gonna span all these columns, just like this, one, two, three columns. That's what I set it as. Okay. So now how do I go in and break this? So I evenly get a certain section here and a certain section here and a certain section here. Well, this is a tricky part because I've decided to take my text container and turn this into three columns here, one, two, three columns. Then I went and I overrode that and saying, span all the columns. I'm going to turn this off completely. Okay, so it just goes into this column. How do I make this fit into each column under here without filling up this entire column? Well, let's try this. I'm going to go to this next headline here because this is all the copy that I'd like to have under this headline here. So this is select all my copy. This is what I'd like to have, but I'd like to have it here. I'd like to have it here. And I'd like to have it here 
all beautifully leveled out. So I'm going to go to my headline here, and I'm going to tell this headline to go in and span all or all three of my columns here. I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to center that so it looks like it's centered in between there. Now look what happened. It took my content that was here in the first column, and it went ahead and it floated all over because this next paragraph here, I told it to span all the columns. So when it spans all the column, it basically creates a barrier. All right, so now I have that, but I still have all my copy here that's stuck in one column. And I can't split this column. If I split the column, now I have two here. That's not what I want. I don't want to span this column because it's going to span all the columns here. That's not what I want. I don't want to do anything here. But when I go to my next paragraph here, my next main paragraph, and I say span all the columns, and then I center this here, it's going to take all the previous copy and it's going to balance it out over my preset columns that I have in my container. So different ways to go ahead and do this. Now, you may be looking at this and being like, okay, this is totally crazy. All right, well, let me back up here, okay? Let's go back to our original text container and I'm going to show you this again so that it makes a little bit more sense, okay? So here's my normal text container as one text container, okay? Everything, just one text container all by itself. I have the choice with one column text container to go in and select all my copy here and tell this copy to go ahead and split it into three columns, three columns which don't exist, by the way, because this is a single column text container right there, one column. But I can take all my content here and I can center this inside the one text container, but have all this split over multiple columns. No columns in my container, but I'm telling it to split the existing copy that I have selected over multiple columns, split into three columns. Okay. Or I can do this where I undo all of this. I can take my text container and I can force it into three separate columns. But then I have to go in and I have to tell this to ignore the columns and basically span all the columns. And then I center it. And then when I do this with each and every subsequent headline here and I span all those columns, it takes everything between this headline and this headline, which I've spanned all the columns and now centered. It now breaks all these into the multiple columns starting here because this is now like a new boundary. And if I do this with each and every one of my headlines here and I span everything, it will then balance all of the content out between every section that I go in and span, and then I center here, and I center here. Why didn't it go ahead and flow all this copy in? Because I my container is long, but if I shore up my container, and I tuck it up here, and I shore it up, you're gonna see that that's all going to balance out right there very nicely, so that it all ties in right there. Now, setting this up in my paragraph styles is something that's of utmost importance. So if I were to go in here and I would like to capture my styles that I've done here, in fact, I'm going to select all my copy. I'm going to choose a font that I think is going to work very good for my menu. I'm going to select that font. And there it is. Reduce the size of it right there. Go into my paragraph formatting. Put a little bit of space after too. So once I go in and I set my copy and I create a new paragraph style out of this, I'm going to call this my menu copy. And I can see, because I've already formatted this with my span or my split, I can go into my span columns and it says, okay, keep this as a single column. But I look at it here and it's going to three columns. So here's what's interesting. The text container itself has nothing to do with your paragraph formatting. So technically, this is a single column of text. Here is a single column, and it just simply flows in. This is not multiple columns at all. Okay, So I can apply that. Now if I apply that to all of my other copy here, this is what I have. Now I'm going to select this copy that I've set up as my headline. Then go to my paragraph formatting. Put some space after this as well. I'm going to create a new paragraph style out of this, and this is going to be my header. 
based on no other style. But let's take a look at the span columns. And here, it's spanning all the columns. Yes, it is, because I've set up a three-column text container, and this particular headline is spanning all the columns. That's exactly what I want it to do. And now if I go and I apply that header that I've created with all of my content, it is now going to take care of all of my headers. Now, why does this go in and flow over multiple columns? Because I've gone in here and I've told this to span multiple columns and this becomes a break. So InDesign tries to level out all of the content before it as quickly as possible and as nice as possible once you go ahead and you span something like this. Kind of cool. Now, if I go back and undo everything, back to my original single column text container, we're going to set up the paragraph style here that is then going to do the opposite. I don't have to span multiple columns here. All I have to do is center this in my single text container. But with all my other text here, I need to go in and I need to split this so that it forms one, two, three, four columns. Now, when I go in and I choose my font and my style that I'd like to have here, I'm going to choose the font that I'd like. In here, let's get something that's interesting. There we go. There's my font. There's my size. And there's my space after right here. Now I'm going to capture this as a paragraph style. Paragraph style drop down, new paragraph style. And this is going to be my menu body. And I go to my span and split columns here. It shows me that this is splitting the columns. It is. It's actually going in and it's splitting the columns. Okay. And it split the columns up here because that's exactly what I wanted to do. Remember, it is a one column text container, but I had it split into multiple columns. Now I can go and do a couple other things here. I can control the gutter, which is the space in between each and every one of these columns here. Okay, see, I can put more gutter inside there. I can also do a space before or space after the split which means if I do a space after the split, it just basically goes in and gets that last paragraph return and puts more space after the last one right here. Okay. If I wanted to put space before the split right here, it just puts space before the very first one. So I don't have to put any space after this. But still, it's splitting into three columns. It's a one column text container that is now split into three columns. So I click OK. There's my menu body. If I now come in here and select all of my menu items, including the last line and that paragraph, and I apply this, this will now take, and this will take my copy that is over a single column wide text container, right? There's no column divisions, and it will now split it like so. So now my headlines here, there's nothing special with this because this is a one column container. So I just set it to be centered. So I'm going to create a new paragraph style out of this. And with this new paragraph style, I'm going to call this my headline. And with this headline, I go into my span columns. And nothing's happening because it's a single column, right? It's a single column text container. All I've done is I've centered it in the middle here. That's it. I've just centered it in there. There's nothing special. Okay. So I create that headline and I apply that headline to all of my other ones here. And I can now break this down. The only thing that doesn't look like it's working the way it should be is this very last section. And that's because I need to close up my text container to basically level that out so that I now have a single column text container with what looks like multiple columns of text. Yet it's all one container. So here you can either use the span feature or the split feature, depending on how you want this to happen. Now keep in mind that you can also go in and you can select different sections here, and maybe you only want this to split into two columns. So maybe you want this to go over two columns, maybe you want this to go over four columns. Doesn't matter, you can split it into multiple different columns. Still one text container, but this is how you can get different looks and feels with this span and split feature.